Knock. I'm dermatologist, Dr. Abby Waldman. In this video, I am gonna share with you everything I know about diet and supplements that are scientifically proven to reduce signs of aging in your skin. So let's get to it. So first off, we know that you should be eating a balanced diet full of vegetables, protein, healthy fats. You should avoid sugars and highly processed foods, right? But did you know that eating sugars and highly processed foods actually makes your skin look older? And the reason for that is because of advanced glycation end products, ages. What a name, right? It ages you. So while the chemistry of glycation and products is quite complicated, in essence, if you have sugars floating around your bloodstream in a heated pool of blood, essentially, they will get attached somewhere. They'll be attached to different proteins or fats. When these sugars are added to different proteins, fats, DNA, it makes those proteins not work as well as they should. It'd be as if you were trying to operate and somebody was putting hats on you and you had to keep operating or doing whatever job you do wearing like 40 hats, right? That's gonna be a lot harder to do than just doing your job normally without all these hats hanging off of you. So that's essentially what glycation is. And this can happen throughout the body, not just the skin, even though that's what we're talking about. It happens in the eyes, in the brain, in your kidneys. It even happens in organelles like the mitochondria, which are responsible for making energy. So as you put these sugars and stuff them in everywhere, it's basically making your whole body not work as well as it should, and it ages faster. In the skin, the biggest proteins that are affected are collagen and elastin. They basically, when you put those sticky glycation products on them, they don't work as well, and your skin is gonna age faster. This process in the skin is called sugar sag. Sagging of your face because of sugar. So can you test for advanced glycation end products, ages, in your body? Well, yes, actually, there is a test that we've been using as physicians for a very long time to test for how well your diabetes is controlled. Because essentially, a lot of the end stage problems of diabetes is related to these advanced glycation products. So the test that we use in diabetes is called hemoglobin A1C. And what that measures is the amount or percentage of your hemoglobin, the protein that's in your red blood cells, how much of that has sugar attached to it, basically. And it's a pretty good measure of what your average blood sugar in your blood is over like a three month period. So we assume that the hemoglobin A1C is representative of all the organs, and that it's essentially the canary in the coal mine, that there's too much sugar on average in the blood and is basically being stuck to all sorts of different proteins and organs. So should you go out and get a hemoglobin A1C? No, that's not what I'm suggesting. Obviously, if you have diabetes, you use that to monitor, but I use it as just an illustration to show you that we do know as physicians, as scientists, that this process is happening all the time. So how do you control your diet to decrease these ages, whether it's for your entire health or for your skin health, are there things that you can do to help? So just like in diabetes, obviously you wanna pay attention to controlling your sugar. Does that mean you never can eat cake again? No, just means on average, you want to decrease your sugar and high processed food, high glycemic index foods. So I'm gonna give you some diet tips that I actually learned from a nutritionist when I had gestational diabetes. So despite not gaining very much weight during my pregnancies. I got gestational diabetes for both pregnancies, thanks to my mom, she also had it. And so that meant my sugars were going way up really high, which is a problem for my body, but it was a really problem also for my little babies. And so I met with a nutritionist and they actually gave me this tip about controlling the glycemic index of your food so you can decrease your blood sugars. So the recommendation is that if you're looking at your nutrition label, you look at the total carbohydrates and you subtract the fiber in that product and the protein. So for instance, I just ate this protein bar and it had 22 grams of carbohydrates Dietary fiber was one gram and protein was 20 grams. So that would be 22 minus one minus 20. So the index would be just one gram. And you want that number, that index number to be 12 or under. Now again, 
This is more important if you are somebody with diabetes where your body's not getting that blood sugar down. For most people, you can live outside of these realms where it doesn't have to be perfectly balanced. But in general, if you think about balancing the fat, fiber, protein and carbohydrates in a meal, you are gonna digest it and your sugar is not gonna go up as high. So during this time that I had gestational diabetes, I was checking my blood sugars all the time. And I would notice that if I ate a handful of grapes, for instance, which are wonderful, and I am a huge advocate for eating fruit, but if I would eat grapes, my blood sugar would shoot up to 200. If I had grapes with Greek yogurt and some nuts, then my blood sugar would stay normal. So same food, same sugar, but balanced with protein and fiber. So it is possible to have your cake and eat it too. Having a sugar soon after a high protein, high vegetable fiber meal actually is not gonna affect your blood sugar. The same way it will be if you just eat it on a completely empty stomach with no other protein or fiber. So that piece of cake is gonna affect you very differently depending on other foods that you eat at the same time. And of course, as I mentioned, the same two people who eat the same two meals are going to have different blood sugars. And that is again, based on your genetics, it's based on your insulin resistance. Insulin is the protein in the body that takes the sugar out of the blood and it brings it to the organs that need it. That's your brain for thinking, that's your muscles for running, it's your heart pumping, those muscles pumping need a lot of sugar. So sugar serves a great purpose in your body. Those carbohydrates keep you alive. But because of genetics, sometimes people either don't make enough insulin or they're a little resistant to the insulin. And so that blood sugar doesn't get where it needs to go. And instead it gets attached to all these proteins that are hanging around in the body. We don't want that. And so these factors are gonna play a dramatic role in how you respond to a meal. So even if you don't want to add up your carbohydrates and your proteins, if you kind of think about the general meal, keeping it balanced is going to really help decrease those ages and decrease the appearance of age in your skin. The other thing besides a low sugar diet is exercise. Now I mentioned that those muscles that you use require a ton of sugar. So when you exercise, that basically shunts that sugar from the bloodstream and it really pulls it in and sends messages to your body to get that sugar, use it to make your muscles go. So the more you exercise, the less sugar is just hanging out in the bloodstream. So again, nothing new here, eat a balanced, healthy diet and exercise. Another possible way that you can be actually eating glycation products is by cooked meat. So meat with a sugar in a frying pan can actually produce those same glycation products that you get inside your body, but they can make them in the pan. Now, my thought is that most of those, when you eat the meat, it's probably getting broken down by your enzymes, by your digestive enzymes in the gut. There's some data to suggest that some of those glycation products actually are getting through and getting into the bloodstream, but I think more research is needed in that regard. That being said, you know, we all know we should not eat too much meat, especially really charred meat. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, moving on to collagen. Collagen is a big one. I feel like I see collagen supplements everywhere. And that's because it does make some sort of sense that our skin is made with collagen and elastin. That's what gives it the flexibility, the bounce, the fullness. Collagen is in our ligaments that allow us to move. It's in our nails, it's in our hair. Collagen is in animals, right? It's the protein of animals, us included, we're animals. So it makes sense that if you eat it, it will go and make more collagen and keep your skin nice and plump and hydrated. Except that when you eat something, it goes through a digestive process that involves enzymes that kind of clip proteins up into its separate peptides and amino acids. Then your body takes those and it rebuilds it. So it's essentially like taking a house, breaking it down into its bricks and mortar, and then rebuilding a new house. So that's why I was actually surprised to read the systematic reviews that show that actually collagen supplements do help the appearance of your skin. And that was particularly true for fish and porcine derived collagens. Now, does that mean that you should run out and get a collagen supplement as soon as possible? I think that if you like collagen supplements, if you're using that and you like that as your source of protein, then keep going. 
that's great. We know it helps, right? I would like to see the study where collagen supplements are compared to just a high protein diet, like eating chicken and fish and eating a really balanced vegan or vegetarian diet where you could really say, well, is this just because of the protein? right? So protein is protein. Like I said, it gets broken down into its separate amino acids and peptides, and it gets rebuilt back up into the proteins that you need in your body. And so I think the key is really just getting adequate protein. Now, this is much easier for non-vegetarians than for vegetarians or vegans. And that's why there's actually no vegan collagen that you can get because collagen is by definition from animal proteins. You need at least 0.8 grams per kilogram of weight in protein. That's kind of like the minimum. In terms of maximum, it really depends again on like how much you're weightlifting or exercising, how much new muscle you are building, because again, you're gonna need those amino acids and those proteins to build all the proteins in your body, not just the skin. So if you're pretty sedentary, you might only need that 0.8 grams per kilogram. If you're vegan or vegetarian, again, you are going to need to balance your diet so that always you are getting all the amino acids with every meal. So that means not just eating rice, but eating rice and beans together to get a full total whole protein where you can get all the amino acids. So what about supplements? So there have actually been a number of supplements that have shown to prevent and reverse some of the signs of aging. The vast majority of these work as antioxidants. Essentially, a lot of the aging of your skin occurs from UV damage coming in, pollution coming in, creating these free radicals, damaging your DNA, damaging proteins. It's like every time you walk out of your house, you're essentially having these little bullets go at your skin. So antioxidants are like man-to-man -man combat that fight those free radicals from UV damage and pollution. A lot of them can be ingested just through your food. A lot of your food has antioxidants, especially fruits and vegetables. A lot of fruits and vegetables have your antioxidants that you need to fight those free radicals. The big one that you hear about is vitamin C. So vitamin C is actually in our skin. It is fighting the free radicals. That's why vitamin C is easiest to get into the skin from the outside, but some of it does come from ingesting it as well. Here's a list of the most researched supplements that have anti-aging effects in your skin. And I don't mean inside the rest of your body, but just for the skin. And I didn't include any of them that are patented. So rosmarinic acid is what it sounds like. It's in rosemary oil. Polypodium locotomus. Try saying that five times fast. My favorite actually are the carotenoids. Carotenoids are in any red or orange vegetable um, that you eat. My favorite is astaxanthin. It's actually, I take this daily. It not only fights those free radicals, it can reduce your incidence of sunburn and sun damage from UV. And the only issue is it can give you a little bit of a tan look. It doesn't for me, but if that's the look you're going for, you might like that. Otherwise you might not like that, but just keep it in mind. Pomegranate extract actually has good photo protection and anti-aging capabilities, as well as orthosilic acid, which if you're taking a hair and vitamin supplement, you may already be taking something similar to that. So even if you are using these supplements that can help decrease how easily you get sunburned, decrease the photo damage that you get when you're out in the sun, you should still be wearing sunscreen. Don't depend only on these. Again, they're a little bit of a UV protection, but they're not the same as wearing full sun protection. So don't go out and just say like, well, I took my supplement today, so I'm good to go. I'm gonna protect myself against UV damage and pollution. Wear the sunscreen, do all of it in order to age beautifully. So please like this video if you got some benefit from it. Subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this. And stay tuned for the next in this series on anti-aging where I'm going to go over some procedures you can have done to reverse the signs of aging. I'm Dr. Abby Waldman. Be well.